All righty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am back for more 86. We are on 86 episode 8. You might notice that I'm wearing the same shirt. That's because it is the same day as the last recording. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of all of my recordings for some reasons. That's all you need to know about it. Um, we're here for episode 8. We just had episode 7. We had a big reveal, which is that the 86 are slated to die. This is an execution ground for them. And every single member of their squadron is going to fucking die. Unless Lena can do something, which she probably can't because, you know, she's just one person against an entire system. Rough. Well, we're gonna see how that plays out. I don't really know. I don't really know. It was, it was rough. Last episode was chock full of interesting contrast and juxtaposition. And um, I will mention, this is sort of an aside, but I'm looking at the very first frame of this episode, and it is the the uh, the 86 like statue thing outside with pig around its neck and the little speech blob above it. I forgot what it says. Welcome to the base closest to heaven with its head cut off. I didn't even make that connection, but now I've made that connection and it makes a lot of sense, right? Base closest to heaven, because you're going soon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely rough. Absolutely rough. Um, also, we attempted our first try, our first crack, you might say, at attacking a new big legion base that is nearby, and failed miserably as we were beginning our approach, some new artillery shells, super duper mega powered artillery shells, blasted out of the fucking sky as though they were shot down from space at us, terrifying, and killed a whole bunch of us. Um, so we have retreated from there. I think that they're going to keep sending the 86 against this base until they all die, right? That's probably what they want to do. They're like, well, Spearhead Squadron needs to die. This seems like an effective way to make that happen. Have at it, kids. God. Ah. Arr. Arr. It's probably a good thing to be watching this episode right after because I'm incensed. I'm a, little, I'm a little angry. I'm a little pissed. I'm a little pissed off. But not that pissed off. I mean, we'll see how, how it all plays out. Um... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen next. This episode is titled, Let's Go, Eco, and I don't know what that's supposed to mean in context, because I didn't know what Will You Remember Me would mean, and now I do. Wow. Um, so we'll have to see. In the meantime, we have introduced what might be a rival or a villain. It's a, it's a big, angry Legion mecha that just killed a whole bunch of juggernauts, and I think it's coming for Sheen, and I think it's probably his brother, but I don't, I don't really know for sure. That's all I've got here at the beginning of 86 episode 8, so let's go ahead and jump into the episode. Once again, I am using Vita Winter's um, compilation of subs. Uh, uh, actually, during the recording of the last episode, uh, Vita sent me a new version of the episode 8 subs with some more changes from other people in the Discord. So thanks, Vita. I, I, do, I do really appreciate it. And to everybody else who helped out with that, it's super appreciated. It's great having a community that is willing to like look out for you like this and, and be like, hey, man, you should probably use the because there's some weird shit and we don't want you to get confused I'm like, ah, yeah that's great thank you so much um, if you want to join that community, by the way, you can do so via the Patreon, which will cost you like a dollar a month uh, just to get the Discord and five bucks a month to get early access to all of the content. And as you can tell, I am recording multiple videos today and I will be trying to do something along those lines in the future so that there's a little bit more of a backlog saved up, which will mean more of a reason to be on the Patreon because there might be more episodes in early access at a given time. So think about it. Anyway. We're going to watch 86 episode 8. I've got it up and ready to go. It's at zero seconds. There will be two versions, picture in picture, in the description. Timer on YouTube. BB timer to count you down. Let's get into it. Hmm. I see it got it got hyper exploded. Well, at least she won't be taken as parts. Thank you, Raiden. Life life goes on for the few that remain. Hmm. Yeah, you're just thinking about how she'll think about things. Interesting. The new one is still silent. I memorized its voice or I knew its voice. Uh, 
Uh huh. Yeah, because he'll kill all of you, probably. No, he's gonna go fight with you. <laughs> you must be fucking joking. Sweet. That was a cool intro sequence. I guess this is Let's Go. Okay. Yeah, no, cool. Sure. Okay. Oh, so many. Oh, so many. <laughs> oh. That's too many dead people. Spearhead, spearhead, spearhead. Whoa. That's a cool transition. Nope, flash, flash. All signed off on by your, by your uncle? Immediate execution. So each each one, they find a, a an impossible mission for them and send them all to die. Fuck. Hi. Hey, do you know how fucked up we are? We're really fucked up. Did you know? Did she know? She gonna take it lightly? It does. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. What do? She's not willing to give. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Oh, finally, she snaps! Finally! Stop making it so hard on yourself. And she lives with that pain. Yep. Repress, 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 repress. Eighty sixes? They were Colorata, right? Do you think they might be the same people? Uh, I doubt it. They just vanished. What, for being friends with them? Oof. Oh my god, it might be! Oops. Yeah! Capable of saying that, I love it. Oh. You could have changed yet. Oh. 
Wow. Even though it wasn't true. Even though it wasn't true. You always cared. How dare you? You make me look bad for not caring. I love this. But... Oh, Annette, you are mean. That was mean, girl. I feel it, but uh, that was mean. A what? Bro, it's all built based on them. And it is Sheen and his brother, right? And it was it was 86s who were capable of it. Oh, a lot. Yeah, of course. Well, they're not, right? So it's it's just not. Oh, this is great. Oh, knives. No, 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 no. Sharp objects. That's the brother. The only thing she holds on to is that is that I'm I'm no worse than you. Sorry, what? You interfered and and kept them alive? Oh, I figured. Holy shit! That's, that was amazing! Holy shit! Yeah, where's, where's that? Where's that? Time pass, time pass, time pass. Sheen and his brother are the two, right? Like, a hundred percent, right? It's a new, a new death sentence? A new death order? Here it comes, he knows. The fuck you doing? No. Looking at the fucking Lady of Justice. Straight up. There it is, finally. Why? Will you stand against the will of the nation? They can't live. It should be. They should be. Reasonable. Destroy the system. Wow, that's so bass backwards.
if you get in that is not true that is inaccurate what if you get in the way ideals again That's new. That's new lore. What? So that's an interesting perspective. I agree. You were hoping that family would be easier. Ooh. Not just that one slips into another, but they are the same thing? Hmm. I have another death sentence. Nope. Nope. Yeah. We're going to go to heaven? Huh? Oh. Slice. Finally called it out. Yeah, we need to fight him. Step off. Oh, no. I don't want you to hear my brother's last words. Oh, Lena's getting destroyed. Are they going to run after killing him? Okay, interesting. What 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 is he recommending that she do though? Dink and he's gone. She can force contact though from her end, right? He can't keep her out, right? Bruh. Okay, we gotta be going into battle now, right? That's what's happening? Oh, what a frame. What a framing. And this guy who's been there all, all this time. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no finish. Uh... Ah. 
So let's go is let's go off on our recon mission. Hey, bud. So he watches these squads come in and out. Oh. Oh, an insert song. Oh my god, we're saying goodbye to our lives. What the fuck? Little them tarot tarot bozos. Oh, redoing all the symbols? Good. Good. But there are two cores! There are so many more episodes! What? What if we kill them all and just bring in a new squad? Ha! <laughs> Great scene. This happiness in the face of the impossible is... is really potent. It's like gallows humor. <sighs> Out of so many, everybody made that promise, right? It's, that's a perspective. Yeah, she was told not to. Mm -hmm. And then she just got beat the fuck down, dude. Oh, I think she's going to be there when it counts. Oh, the Terra Terra Bozu. Huh. <laughs> nice, there you go. Hey, you Fiat Fido. Oh. It's a whole Fido train. Oh. Hmm. Those are all the, all the, the commanders and stuff. Jesus. Let's go. Eco. Eco. There it is. To our deaths! What? What? So we're leaving base, taking some taking some stuff with us, and going off on a, a death mission. Interesting. And the, the base is now ready for a new squadron. Are we gonna cut over to Lena? Now? Like Yeah. No, we're still here. What? Okay. Oh, are we gonna- is this ED? We're at three minutes left. Yeah.
None this car. It's shit, it's Ray. And are we gonna reveal that they are the brother the brothers? This is where he's gonna freak out. Cheek out. What was that? This is where he died clinically. The Skull Knight! Wakey, wakey. And they list them as juggernauts? Oh, he is a big boy. <laughs> well, that was a cool sequence. I didn't think we'd get to see from his perspective. Ooh. Ooh, that's groovy. And goodbye, the thing that Lena didn't get to say, and that they were worried she would never say. I think she'll call them. I'm not worried about it. Holy shit. This episode is cool. Man. The amount of hypocrisy is, is insane. And this, this mindset of fighting against, you know, fighting for the sake of fighting, I guess, for the sake of living on, even though it, it just leads to your death, is kind of badass. It just is. Fighting in the face of hopeless, hopelessness is super badass. Anybody who's experienced um, um, anything along the lines of depression knows what this means. You know what it feels like. Why even get up? Why even do anything? Why do any of it? None of it matters. You fight anyway. You fight anyway. I fucking love Raiden. I love this sequence where we show all of their faces, just the few of them, going on with their everyday. But we see little little bits of it not being quite the same. Urgh! The anger at the throw. There's tension here, but they're all pushing through. I found him. There's a reason to go. We'll follow you to the end, Reaper. So sick! And the squad in heaven is infinite. This shit with Annette, finally. Man, this has been building forever. Her resentment toward Lena has been there so much since the beginning. And, uh, like, it, this is pretty clear, clear cut. She hates herself, right? She hates Lena because Lena keeps trying. And it would be so much easier for Annette to justify her own inaction if Lena would just give up, right? The, be the best course of action is to just give up and, and pretend that it doesn't exist. And the fact that you keep not doing that reflects badly on me. It reflects badly on me. It makes me look like a callous bitch because I, I've given up. Oh, wait, I am a callous bitch. That's the problem. Now, it's not... It's not being being a, a callous bitch isn't like it isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world it's because calluses right it, it's part and parcel to the word what causes calluses R repeated abrasion of the skin right in in my case from like deadlifts right from 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 picking up a barbell repeated abrasion repeated injury essentially that is why she is calloused is because she's been hurt so much that she decided to become blocked off to that pain fine 
understandable. But the way she lashes out at Lena for it... Oy! Now, there is something legitimate to what she says, which is that it seems hopeless. It seems hopeless. It seems like there's nothing that can be done. What are you going to do? Go, go in to give a speech? Find somebody important to yell at them? That, if that could work, this wouldn't have happened. So give it up. We can't fix it. Eat the cookies. Lena snaps. Stop pretending to be a bad person just to have an excuse to do nothing. And finally, Annette snaps hard. You're the one who needs to stop. And Lena's in shock. What? Stop. Just stop. I mean it. Seriously. We can't do anything. We can't save them. Let me show you what I mean. Their next door neighbors were scientists on my dad's research team. They had all changed when the war started. They were 86. Two boys. Older was way older, but the younger was my age, and by extension, the age of Lena, right? We went to the same school and played a lot. We were friends, okay? But the next thing I knew, they all stopped coming. All my classmates were bullying me, saying I was friends with a filthy colored. It hurt. There wasn't anything I could do. Wrong. It hurt. I didn't want to keep bullying, but he didn't know about it and wanted to play. So I turned him down, and we got into a fight. And that's the ball. It's still sitting out there. And that's Sheen, right? It's the same haircut that we see later, right? It's the same kid. It's him. It's him. You filthy colored. Oh, shit. What did I just say? I love this moment. This here. Where we transition from her here to her here. Here's why I love this. I think it indicates to us that Annette as she is now is still that little girl. There's no growth that has happened between that moment and now. That's not entirely fair, but it does seem to be the case, right? Annette's whole deal, the reason she said you filthy color was because of her own fear and because everybody else said it, right? It was going along with the flow, the way that Annette always does and always has, right? The flow of trying to get married when she doesn't really want to, it seems, and all of the people that try to marry her she hates. Maybe she hates her fucking self more than that, right? Like, it, this is great. This is great. I was, I love this as well. I, I, this is like the one thing that I wrote down. I wrote down. I wrote down two things during this episode. Capable of saying that. I was scared of myself for being capable of saying that. This is why I stress so frequently that it is utterly crucial that you understand your capacity for bad action. That you understand that you are capable of all of those things. You are not a racist per person. You are capable of racism. You are not a violent person. You are capable of violence, right? You are not a person who wants to hurt others. You are a person who is capable of hurting others. And if you are not aware of that, you're going to become scared of yourself and you're going to hate yourself for your own capacity. And you're going to be more likely to do those things because you're not aware that they're even possible. You haven't set out the mental blocks, the mental strength to hold on to yourself, right? You haven't done it. You don't have the discipline. You haven't even incorporated it. You haven't even thought about it. It's just impossible. And so I love this, this moment, and I love this line from her. My dad was thinking about taking them in despite the danger, and I said I didn't want to. I said he wasn't my friend. My dad wanted my support, but I gave him a way out, and it was shattered like the cookie. They were sent to the camps the next day. All I could do was tell myself I couldn't do anything, right? I have come to believe the refrain that I convinced myself of. All I could do was say, tell myself I couldn't do anything. Double lie, right? All I could do was false. I couldn't do anything. False. Both are false. What she could do, I'm not certain. But I couldn't do anything is not helpful. But you, Lena, you always, you always. Huh. And she's like, this has been brewing inside this woman for forever all of this self-hatred projected onto lena right you act like a saint but you're just as hopeless as i am really but you're just as guilty as me why why in in what way i i don't think that's true here i, I don't think that's true <laughs> I don't think I don't think Lena is as guilty as you, Annette, the person who actively made decisions that got individual people sent to the front lines, individual specific people that you knew. 
and actively chose to continue on your father's work and produce the the underlying structure that allow the, the the technology that allows for this continued violation of rights to occur. I don't think there's almost anyone in this entire world who's as guilty as you are, Annette. I don't think anyone is even close. If it weren't for you, this wouldn't be happening. Now, I'm not saying that the pursuit of technology and the cause of that is like the blah, blah, blah. Nor would I say that like Oppenheimer is responsible for Hiroshima, right? That's It's an absurdity to think of it that way. And it's not Annette's fault that her technological advances are being used in this particular way. It's not her fault that that's occurring, but you can spin it that way. And when there's... I think it's fair when there's as much spin on a a set of lines as Annette is putting on them to spin them back the other way, right? I think that's only fair, I think. You're just as guilty as me. And this rocks, this rocks Lena, but it's not true, I don't think. So she takes her to the lab. They had a strange power and their mother. Ding, that's Ray, right? And that's Sheen, right? Oh, that's Sheen right there. He's looking the other direction, totally. Dude, they knew each other as kids. Annette did, at least. Maybe Lena didn't, but Annette knew him as a kid. Oh, that's Sheen, right? Because he's always wearing the, the suspenders. And then this would be her, right? And then this would be Ray in the center. They could tell what each other felt. And so we began. Toy-like devices, game experiments, then the military ordered him to perfect it, and the result was the raid device. How many 86 died to make it? A lot. Who caused that? Eh, your dad, and then you. Human experimentation. Even though they said the, the 86 aren't human. Perfect. They were all children, and you knew it. Results first, safety last. I love it. My dad committed suicide. No, 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 of course not. He always told me that he deserved to suffer and die. Which means I'm just as guilty for abandoning my friend, right? Yes. Yes, actually. Yes. Yes. Finally, you hit on it, Annette. You are. You are. Yes. Good job. If only you could actually incorporate that and understand that that's a part of who you are. Maybe you wouldn't be projecting so hard onto Lena. But yes. No, you're fucked up. You fucked up, Annette. <laughs> you dumb dingus. I was worried when we saw these, um, these sharp objects in the background. I thought things were going to get violent in here. Haha! -ha. So I took it over, because I'm guilty anyway. A stained hand might as well have more blood on it, right? Why, why try to accomplish good things in my life? Why try to offset the horrors that I've caused? No, 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 just dive in. Undertaker, was it? Hmm. If I'd had them bring the processor that was the cause, I might have been able to save him if nobody else. But that's just hypocrisy. I'm glad those shitheads in transport refused. See, nothing we can do. So the individual things that have failed, anytime any of them doesn't work, she uses that as a justification for there's nothing we can do, right? Instead of this thing didn't work, it's nothing will work. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a deeply depressed, deeply pessimistic worldview. It's rough. I can't save anyone. True. But you're no different. Doesn't justify it. I can't save anyone. True. But you're no different. Doesn't justify it. I shot a bunch of children. True. <laughs> Not true. I, I, haven't, I haven't done that. But you did too. Doesn't justify it. Right? I killed a person. But you did too. You're just as guilty as me. No? doesn't justify it doesn't work this way but you're no different you interfered and kept them alive and now they're being ordered to die i don't know specifically when she means when does she mean you interfered and kept them alive who who i'm i'm unclear about the specificity here to bring the processor i i'm, I'm unclear if you just slacked off and let them die, they wouldn't have gotten that order. I, I don't know what she means. In which situation? The Spearhead Squadron? And now they will, thanks to you. So it's all your fault. What? I hate you, Lena. Damn right you do. Finally it comes out. Don't need none of your fake fucking cake, bitch. I hate you too. Never let me see you again. And we see... We see Lena uh, breaking down. This is a breakdown. This is the idealism, right? We talked about this frame. Xena, the warrior princess, right? Warrior princess, something to fight for. 
shatters. The flowers wilt. Every attempt that she makes falls apart. Time passes and time passes and nothing happens. I won't let anyone else die. Sounds pretty fucking empty when everyone is slated to die. And the new orders come in. And so she walks into here and he's waiting for her, of course. Striding forward, trying to embody that Xena energy again. The energy of St. Magnolia herself. Let me cancel the orders. No. Why do they have to do this? They must. They all need to die. It's what's best for the country. And he says it explicitly. According to its government and indirectly to its people. That's the will of the nation. And he is incensed throughout this conversation. He is, he is angry. I thought he was going to hit her. Um, and his explanation is so bass backwards. It's, it's utterly upside down fucked. Uh, 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 absolutely fucked. If what we've done gets out then we will become a pariah state and be remembered forever as oppressors, as is justified, as you goddamn well should, right? <laughs> that everyone will think what you're doing is wrong is not a reason to keep doing what you're doing, idiot. Idiot. But politically, it's exactly the reason to keep doing what you're doing, right? In fact, it's, it's a reason that, that political institutions do things like this all the time. Not to this extent, but all the time. And individual politicians all the time cover their shit up. Even though they could stop the horrors. And to keep that from happening, they all need to die. So that's why they can't recover or bury their dead. When they're all dead, they will cease to have existed. None of what we have done to them will have mattered. Right. Right. Does the existence of an observer change the morality of an action? That's the, that's the core underlying uh, uh, thing here, right? Um, does, does the existence of an observer change the morality of an action? Does having somebody... Uh, okay, here, here's the thing. If I kill Johnny, Johnny ceases to exist. And anything bad that I've done to Johnny not a problem anymore is it is it more morally justified to kill somebody to kill johnny with nobody watching than it is to kill johnny with somebody watching just because if i kill johnny and nobody's watching and i presume that i can just get away with it right it's a perfect murder nobody will ever know and i know this i know that it's a perfect murder going into the sequence right versus knowing that there's somebody watching and so i will be tr found probably guilty and tried for murder right I will become a pariah because I've, do I've done actions that are evil, <laughs> that are wrong. Are those actions less or more wrong because there's somebody watching or not watching? No. No. No, they're the same action, right? It's just the response of everybody else that, that, that is changed. So it's like he's trying to justify the morality of our, of our issues by saying, well, nobody's going to know about it, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's crazy. It's crazy. Most are supporters of this, and our job as the army, Lena, is to follow the people's wishes. Most of the people don't even know, right? It's crazy. But the 86 are part of the Republic. Our ideals, and she's so small in this frame, I love that. The ideals that St. Magnolia expounded should protect them. If they aren't, how can this be the will of the Republic? And I love his response because it's actually accurate. Rage as he turns and she steps back for a second. Whoa, what is that? This is a country full of fools and villains who executed St. Magnolia for the sake of their own wealth and greed. A story that's not in the history books as far as we know. Why is she a saint? She's an idealist who was killed for it, right? And then the people who killed her built an institution around her image. It's all built on a hypocritical lie. Right? Every bit of this country, top to bottom, start to finish. Amazing. So what can you expect of them? They won't be better. Just give it up. And this final line, humans were not ready to have freedom and equality. Maybe they never will be. You're just saying that to justify your despair. It's wrong to sit back and let this happen. Accurate, accurate. You're free to speak of your hopes and ideals, but they won't persuade anyone. Hmm. I do love this as well. Hope and despair are the same thing. 
You want something and you can't have it. They're one and the same. Two different words to talk about two sides of the same coin. I love that. I love that depiction. Um, my favorite depiction of hope and despair actually comes from Fate Zero. It's the the creepy guy who says a thing about um, despair being deepest and most beautiful when hope is built up and then you snatch it away, right? And that's how I, I, I like to envision despair and how I, I like narratives to produce despair is to bring up hope and then snatch it away, bring up hope and then snatch it away. This is a different a different um, outlook. It's a different perspective on it. And I think it has something valid to offer to that perspective. I think it's good. You want something and you can't have it. And it's this is a different type of story. There hasn't been a lot of hope in this story. Really has not been a lot of hope. Not even a little bit even, right? In fact, despair is part and parcel to it. There is no way out. Everybody says that. The 86 say that. Only Lena even holds on to hope. And despairs because of it. So it's a perfect explanation of why things are the way that they are. It's great. So, the orders just run away. And they've got all of the responses to it. And you don't hate us? No, we're not going to die. We're finally following the path we wanted to follow to the place we wanted to go. I'd prefer you didn't disparage that. We can finally be free. I have to fight. We gotta fight to go forward. To kill your brother? Yes. Why did you have to realize that? I still laugh coldly. Don't fight, please. We can't fight your brother. Major, don't monitor us anymore. Bye. And we leave Lena crushed. Absolutely crushed in her own room. Beyond the eastern border, there are no Legion voices. If anyone is left alive, help may come from there. I don't understand this. Beyond the eastern border, there are no legion voices. If anyone is left alive, help may come from there. I don't understand this at all. But I guess it's hope. When a shepherd dies, it throws the legion into chaos for a while. These are like his words to her. These are going to matter. We can buy you that much time. So... Survive until then. What? And he signs off. Let me turn to here. Damn. So th there, we, we opened the door to like some kind of hope there. I don't know what that means though. The lack of voices across the eastern border, the question about anybody being alive. I don't, I don't understand completely. I, I just don't know. And we cut here to their last moments at the base as they clean up their own location to leave it behind for someone else. Reminds me of, in a weird way, of like cleaning out a dorm room, knowing that a new student will, and will enter that space that you've inhabited for a year or whatever and have their own life there. Like it's weird. It's a weird feeling, that feeling of leaving or, or moving out of a house and cleaning everything out. Fucking glory to the Spearhead Squadron. And we chatted out, and everything is peaceful. Everything is, like, nice. We, we see each and every one of these characters doing their own things, and we see and focus on little smiles on their faces. This contentedness in the face of their own death is fascinating. This gallo it's not even Gallo's humor, it's like, it's Gallo's support. And dawn rises. We have our beautiful breakfast. We reminisce a bit about these moments. We swore to each other. We all swore to each other. We all swore. And then I love this line, this line from them. And all five of us survived, right? What a perspective. Because all of these people presumably swore that same thing, right? We all swore to each other. And all five of us survived. It's like, it's like survivor bias or something. But it's, it's strength for them. It's mental strength for them. They do their dishes. We bring up not having called. Clear skies. Little candy. Eco. 
and off they trot. We leave this place behind, we show it emptied out. As they walk off into the sunrise. And that's our end. And then there's this shit. The moments that they've captured of, of his brain. The mind that's in there. Come and be with me forever, brother. Oh my god. The blame. The self-blame. The Sheen blame. The hatred. And the moment that he brought Sheen to death and beyond. He did strangle him. His heart is stopped. But they resuscitate him. And Alba does. An Alba doctor. Or something. Maybe the, maybe the person uh, uh, over there, you know? We also see the orders that he's being conscripted and that his parents are dead to replace them. And we see him shattered, warped inside a machine. Ah! Ah! It's pretty fucking sick. It's pretty fucking sick! Sayonara. Sayonara indeed. All right, everybody, that's been episode 8 of 86. It's an interesting one, way all over the place. I mean, in a great way, in a great way. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really strong. I thought, thought both of these episodes were really strong. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to call it there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time for more. Peace.